On our planet, there seems to be an infinite number of beautiful places one can visit, with an equal number of spectacular things to admire. It requires nothing more than a curiosity to observe what is all around you. The miracle of nature manifests in countless ways, from breathtaking vistas to the simple movements of a common heifer. The purpose of this program is to present you with the extraordinary diversity of our miraculous blue planet so that you can discover these things for yourself. Thailand is one of the few countries in Southeast Asia that has never been a European colony. Perhaps the word Thai, which means free, has something to do with it. It is possibly the reason why this country evokes a certain magic that sets it apart from the surrounding countries. Some 30 kilometers south of India lies an island that has been known by many names throughout history. Ancient Greek geographers called it Taprobane, and Arabs referred to it as Serendib. Sayalau was the name given to Sri Lanka by the Portuguese when they arrived in 1505 and was translated into English as Ceylon. As a British Crown colony, the island was indeed known as Ceylon and achieved independence under the name Dominion of Ceylon in 1948. The day is breaking above the Mekong River that flows through northern Thailand. Fishermen are waking in hope that today's catch will be worth their while. They have nothing but hope left as fish in the river are diminishing. The people's faith in one of the world's longest rivers remains strong. They still address it with the great aspect of mother of water. The legend has it that a half-god creature with the body of a snake and a human face lives in the river. The fishermen hold this being in such high regard they still offer sacrifice, hoping for its favor. The Mekong River flows from the Tibetan Plateau, where in deep ravines, a strong current is created. It settles down in neighboring Laos, and on reaching Thailand, it flows gently. The capital of the Thai Kingdom is Bangkok. The entire country is very popular as a tourist destination. The climate is tropical with high temperatures, considerable humidity, and is strongly influenced by monsoons. With the exception of larger cities, it's obvious that the Thai people live in admirable symbiosis with their animals and with the surrounding nature in general. After all, it is their main and often their only source of livelihood. This is the city of Udorn Thani, and here we are in the botanical garden called Udorn Sunshine. Mr. Pong cares for the orchids and inherited the garden and farm from his father, for whom flowers were the love of his life. His father cultivated a brand new variety of orchid called Miss Udorn Sunshine. While orchids were once affordable only to the rich, today they are widely accessible. Thailand is one of the world's foremost cultivators and exporters of these beautiful flowers. Air pollution and ozone depletion have resulted in changing techniques for growing orchids over the years. Orchids now need to be grown with a roof overhead to protect them from the sun. Some 5,000 orchids grow on the farm. They bloom several times a year.
This specimen is the most popular. Apparently, it dances. Judge for yourself. From flowers grown artificially in captivity on a farm, we move into the untouched nature of a tropical rainforest. This is the Erewhon National Park. It's named after the three-headed white elephant ridden in ancient times by the Vedic god of thunder and lightning. People come here not only to admire the nature, elephants and monkeys, but also to meditate. When the monks living in the rock-carved temples are preoccupied, the people are free to use the available prayer slot machines. Fortune telling is also available. Just draw a number and read the corresponding information on the notice board. If you are skeptical of the slot machines, the services of Mr. San, his caged bird, are also available. <laughs> As seen here, fortune telling can be entertaining. As a matter of fact, the vast majority of Thai people believe in fate. <laughs> Mr. San's fortune-telling technique comprises of the bird picking out the right card from the pile with his beak in return for a treat. <laughs> Mr. San then makes the client either happy or sad, or both simultaneously. <laughs> Naturally, people want to hear the good news. Mr. San is well aware of this, and so his clients usually walk out satisfied. Mr. San prospers accordingly. A visit to Mr. San is followed by a call to the most important local pilgrimage site, to a temple with a statue of Buddha. While the visitors were in great spirits down there, Ascending these steps have left them somewhat less jolly. Reaching the temple high in the mountains takes 360 steps. The information about the actual number of steps varies. Some say there are as many as 600. This could be caused by the heat or exhaustion after the ascent, when one is generally too tired to do arithmetic. Physical exertion is said to benefit the soul. Whoever reaches the top apparently gets to experience nirvana. The temple is really just a cave, but caves do have magical symbolism for the Thai people. They believe ghosts live within. Monks seeking spiritual peace were known to find refuge in caves. According to an ancient legend, a white elephant died here and the people believed that a deceased king was reincarnated into this noble animal. Regardless, this place is ideal for quiet meditation and offers a breathtaking view as well. From the heights to the shore, here we are on the lovely island of Phuket in the southwestern part of Thailand. The island is the seat of a province bearing the same name. This beauty was destroyed in the blink of an eye in 2004 by the devastating tsunami that swept through the region. Today, the beaches are restored to their previous beauty and the coast is safeguarded by a tsunami warning system. The fishermen, too, are safer now. There is no sign of the recent tragedy. We leave the fishermen to sail away because we, too, are in for an adventure. we are about to set course for a real natural miracle. Already from afar, the rocky islands rising steeply from the sea look magnificent. To 
despite their rocky base, they are overgrown with vegetation. The sea is tranquil and beautiful. We have reached the islands. We approach one of them, embark on a dinghy, and get closer still. The place is interwoven with caves hollowed out by water, hiding lagoons and creeks. It's very peaceful here. Nothing upsets this feasting monkey. With a bit of fantasy, these peculiar animals could be a cross between a fish and a newt. We take a while to admire the beauty of these undermined rocks and almost frightening rock formations and find ourselves on the open sea once more. An almost fairy tale like horizon opens in front of us. And it wouldn't seem strange if an ancient wooden ship from times long past suddenly appeared. Thankfully, we did not encounter any sails or black flags with the skull and crossbones. Luckily, the legendary Captain Flint must have looted in a different part of the world. And so we head for the way back. The sun is setting and the sky promises a storm. It's time for nature to take charge. We have now opted for a somewhat more dynamic means of transport. We land at the Fifile Island. Phuket Island may boast a number of stunning beaches, but none of them matched the popularity of Maya Bay, the setting for the Hollywood blockbuster, The Beach, starring Leonardo DiCaprio. The island is made up of two rocky capes with sandy beaches in between. The one to the right is shallower and turns into a sinking sandbank at low tide. Welcome to Sri Lanka. In other words, the shining country if its name is translated directly from the Sanskrit. Until 1972, the country was officially called Ceylon. For many still today, this island south of India remains simply Ceylon. That word Ceylon is, as a matter of fact, a mistaken pronunciation of the Portuguese word Ceylau, the name given by Portuguese explorers who discovered it. The current title of this beautiful yet troubled country is the Democratic Socialist Republic of Sri Lanka. The mispronounced Portuguese word may have been a better choice after all. This pearl of the Indian Ocean gained independence in 1948. Sri Lanka is a beautiful and colorful place. There are tropical rainforests in the more humid parts and more resistant monsoon forests with precious timber in the drier northern parts. World-renowned tea thrives everywhere. T 
Tea has been grown in Ceylon on a large scale since 1876, when the British merchant James Taylor decided to establish a tea plantation in the Lula Kondera region. Because this region meets all the required conditions for tea growing, warm climate, suitable altitude and sloping terrain, the whole area is now one huge tea plantation. is breaking in Sri Lanka. Nature is waking slowly and welcoming the rising sun. The time has come to set out for Adams Mountain. The mountain is the largest and at the same time the most striking symbol of the country's religious tolerance. It is said to be the place where Adam first set foot after his banishment from paradise. Its local name is Sri Prada, the holy footprint. This is said to have been left behind by Buddha himself on his way to paradise. The Hindus call it Samalakanda, Butterfly Mountain, because they believe this is where butterflies come to die. It is also the seat of Shiva. This holy place, 2,243 meters above sea level, attracts Christians, Muslim, Hindus, and Buddhists alike. The British writer, John Stills, described the peak of Adams Mountain as one of the greatest and most revered cathedrals of all humankind. It may be the only place in the world where all religions speak one language. If only it were like that everywhere. Ascending this endless stairway, lined by tiny plots resembling an ancient Maya culture, is a feat, but it's well worth the exertion and the view. The Indian elephant lives in Sri Lanka. It's physically smaller than its African counterpart, and so are its ears. The Indian elephant reaches heights of two to four meters and weighs up to five tons. Elephants enjoy an important status in Sri Lankan history. In ancient times, they belonged to the crown, and their killing is still considered a serious crime today. According to the legend, Queen Maya had a dream just before she gave birth to Buddha, whereby a white elephant entered her right side. The royal fortune tellers interpreted the dream in such a way that the queen would give birth to an exceptional being. They were right. The locals look after the elephants with great care. The leading of the elephants through town to water makes for a unique experience. Bathing is very thorough, and the pachyderms, babies included, indulge in it. The climax of the whole event is a sensual wallowing in mud.
Sri Lanka is a botanist's and flora lover's paradise. The favorable climate provides great conditions for the growth of plants. The local orchids are absolutely unique. Here, they grow in a huge variety of types, colors, and shapes. Rhododendron groves, endless fields of poppies, and protected heaths spread out across the hillier parts of the islands. Magnificent trees bloom from March through May. Daybreak welcomes us in the Yala National Park. Alongside a multitude of birds, two subspecies of the Indian elephant live here. The park is also home to the mugger crocodile. The park's greatest pride and joy, however, is the spotted leopard. It is a unique Sri Lankan subspecies, and there are only 35 animals living here. The animals are safe in the Yala National Park, and they enjoy particularly favorable conditions in this preserve. They seem to enjoy life thoroughly, just like this water buffalo. Let us hope that the life of all the people and the country as a whole is just as enjoyable. Our journey to the miraculous nooks of our planet comes to an end for now. In the next episode, we'll part with the many miracles of nature. We'll recap the world's beautiful places which we have encountered so far. We may look forward to volcanoes on either hemisphere, glaciers, tropical rainforests, lakes, stunning coastlines, rough cliffs, picturesque fjords, as well as wild animals and magnificent birds. That's all right here on Miracles of Nature. We hope you'll join us. On our planet, there seems to be an infinite number of beautiful places one can visit with an equal number of spectacular things to admire. It requires nothing more than a curiosity to observe what is all around you. The miracle of nature manifests in countless ways, from breathtaking vistas to the simple movements of a common heifer. 
The purpose of this program is to present you with the extraordinary diversity of our miraculous blue planet so that you can discover these things for yourself. Come join us on a round the world trip. While watching Miracles of Nature, we encounter some amazing natural sights, often ordinary at first sight. Let us be reminded of some truly remarkable places on Earth, the most extraordinary animals that have ever evolved and the rarest plants to have ever grown. We begin in Patagonia. A one-of-a-kind glacier, Perito Moreno, lies in Patagonia. A massive frozen river creeps down the nearby Andes, whose peaks on the horizon are veiled in mist and ends here in the Lago Argentino Lake. This is the only glacier in the world that today, in times of global warming, does not decrease in size. On the contrary, it is actually growing. This breathtaking icy embankment is only tens of meters high. The individual icy pillars shatter under the immense pressure and occasionally, one tumbles down into the mirror-like surface of the lake. gradually thaw in the cool water, only to be replaced by the next mass of frozen water. This stunning icy stage moves at the unbelievable speed of two meters per day. Let us part with this kingdom of ice and seek some warmth. The patient camels slowly chew the remaining bits of vegetation that managed to grow in the scorching sand. This is the easternmost cape of the Arabian Peninsula, Oman. The Bay's giants are preparing for the next arduous journey. In the immense desert, the wind moves the grains of sand and constantly changes the shape of the yellow and orange dunes that stretch into the distance. It is easy to feel one's insignificance when faced with such stark beauty. As the darkness falls over the Arabian Gulf, an evening show that has no parallel in the animal world is being prepared. Is that a turtle? The desert is adjacent to the sea, and this lovely beach is a place where once every year, turtles from all over the Indian Ocean come to lay eggs. No one really knows why it's here that they come, but when the time is right, adult turtles come to this exact beach and lay their eggs in the sand. Not long after, tiny turtles hatch. At first, they've got to make their way through the sand to the surface using their small fins, and then the race for the sea begins. Many die every year because they head off in the wrong direction. The desert heat then literally bakes them so that the only thing that remains is a tiny whitened shell.
The miracle of birth is complete. The brave little turtle has reached its destination. Let's hope she may one day return so that she too may give life. Let's see everything a sea turtle may encounter in the ocean. Here, we're in the Caribbean, on the Cayman Islands that are a paradise for all marine life lovers. In between the corals, there are fish of all shapes, colors, and sizes. It's an amazing exhibition. It's not certain just how long this marine paradise will last. These huge coral gardens are surprisingly fragile and sensitive. The gradual warming of the water and pollution brought over from North America by ocean currents are taking their toll. The southern rays are a curiosity. They look as though made of rubber as they slowly move just above the sea bottom. They are in no rush and constantly filter the seawater to take in the plankton. They move with such incredible grace that at times it seems as though they are dancing. These blue iguanas would have their share of complaints against humans if only they could speak. Long ago, there were countless iguanas here, but a few years ago, their last colony comprised only 15 individuals. These unique reptiles move slowly and fearlessly over the island. They are a sad example of just how insensitive and selfish man can be in his attitude towards the natural world. Let's hope that it is not too late. Should the blue iguanas become extinct, the islands would most likely have to be renamed because the island's name comes from the word Cayman, a type of crocodile that long ago a famous sailor mistook the iguanas for. In the blink of an eye, we are transported thousands of kilometers to the Moroccan seaside province of Guelmin. The deep red rocks made of granite and red sandstone are found nowhere else in the world. Over the years, the salty water and the sharp winds have chiseled the rocks into unbelievable shapes. Today, it's possible to wander the beach within these tunnels and admire this natural miracle. A place called Lexira is at its loveliest as the sun sets. The crimson rays reflect off the rock of the same color and are mirrored in the waves. Let's return back to the Caribbean for just a little while. The largest colony of the magnificent frigate bird in the Caribbean is found on the island of Barbuda. These birds have a cruel destiny. They feed on flying fish, but are unable to swim. They don't have oily feathers, and if they get wet, they would drown. They nest in the mangroves, unique trees that require fresh as well as salt water to survive, and so grow in estuaries where rivers flow into the sea. The males are capable of blowing up their scarlet throat pouches remarkably. The foamy waves of the Caribbean Sea break over magnificent cliffs on the neighboring island of Antigua. Here, faced with the mighty ocean, man once again realizes just how insignificant and powerless he is against the forces of nature. Nature rules the element of water, but also that of fire. This is a well-known fact on the island of Montserrat near Antigua. When the Sofir volcano erupted in 1995, the capital of Plymouth Island had to be totally evacuated. Active volcanoes can also be found in Europe. The seven stunning islands of the Lopari Archipelago lie near the northern coast of Sicily and are volcanic in origin. Hot vapor rises to the sky from crevices and cracks in this inhospitable land where vegetation is not welcome.
The old Greeks named this volcano because of its shape. Stromboli stands for the rounded one. This smoky mountain has been spouting lava for over 1,000 years. The view of the surrounding islands from the slopes of Stromboli is breathtaking. The light volcanic dust is ever present. Fire and molten lava splatter out of Stromboli almost continuously. It's rarely dangerous because most of the lava falls right back into the crater. Even so, the locals, just like their ancestors, revere the volcano with great respect. on the opposite side of the globe in New Zealand. The scenario, however, remains the same. The Bay of Plenty in New Zealand is also the result of volcanic activity. The local volcano, Mount Tarawera, comes across as peaceful, but it last erupted not so very long ago in 1886. The burnt earth has had a chance to regrow and the lush hillsides and deep forest are almost idyllic. The volcanic activity, however, is still apparent in some places. The White Island, named by Captain James Cook, got its name thanks to the white clouds that seem to emerge from it. Today, White Island is the most active volcano in New Zealand. The landscape absolutely reminds one of something from a Jules Verne novel. Dandelions are replaced by sulfate, and creeks bubble as a result of high temperatures. White Island is one of the most fascinating and accessible volcanoes on Earth. As New Zealand's only live marine volcano, scientists and volcanologists worldwide are attracted by its unique features. Walking on White Island is almost like walking on the moon. Virtually no vegetation survives the harsh, acidic environment inside the crater walls. Instead, lush beds of yellow and white sulfur crystals grow amongst hissing, steaming, and bubbling fumaroles. Let's go back to Europe now. Right in the very center of Europe lies the Czech Republic. And in the very center of the Czech Republic lies a region known as the Bohemian Paradise. This landscape also is volcanic in origin, a fact that is apparent in this rock formation known as the Rock Organ. There's nothing to be feared here in the heart of Europe. All of the local volcanoes are long extinct. There is a beautiful view into the surrounding natural landscape from atop these picturesque mountains. But what lies ahead of us are the splendid Blue Mountains. We are headed to Australia. The Blue Mountains form a part of the Australian Great Dividing Range. The Blue Mountains gained this simple name from the blue haze that rises off millions of eucalyptus trees and gives the sky, as well as the mountain peaks, a bluish tone. It took the settlers of the youngest continent some time before they managed to conquer this inaccessible mountain range. Today, these mountains are a great challenge to many adventurous visitors. Man has always felt the need to prove to himself that it's he, and not nature, that is the ruler of all creation. The koala bear, on the other hand, 
has nothing to prove. These bears spend the vast majority of their days clinging to trunks of eucalyptus trees. The most famous Australian animal must not be left out, the kangaroo, of course. They spend most of their time just standing around, but once they get hopping, they are capable of reaching incredible speed. While the Australian fauna are remarkable, the most fascinating group of animals living together in one place is found in Africa. Dignified elephants walk with heavy, majestic strides. The hippos may seem clumsy, but are capable of developing serious speed and have many human lives on their conscience. Crocodiles are also fairly dangerous. The tallest of all animals is without a doubt the giraffe. Antelopes appear to graze peacefully, but are forever on guard because they are the predator's often obvious choice. Because of humans, there continues to be less and less room for these beautiful animals. The mountain gorillas living in the Congo, in the province of southern Kivu, are a sad example of human thoughtlessness. Their population was nearly 10,000 just a few years back. Approximately only 100 are now left. Luckily, the playful young have no perception of the imminent danger and so frolic happily in the jungle. The leader of the pack, or shall we say the head of the family, is easily spotted judging by his stern features. These animals are among the most scarce inhabitants of Africa. It is time to return to the Arabian Peninsula now, to Socotra. Socotra is an island full of surprises. The unique and fascinating characteristics of the local fauna and flora are closely linked to its geological history. Scientists consider Socotra to be the remotest piece of dry land in the history of planet Earth. It seems as though small children were playing on this beach, but that was not the case. This is the work of local crabs that dig holes in the sand and pile it into neat little pyramids. The crabs are unaware, of course, but their efforts come across as a contest for who can build the highest structure. Everywhere you look, there is something utterly unique. The locals refer to these plants in a somewhat unflattering manner. They call them, let's say, the backside of an elderly fat lady with the head buried in the ground. Nevertheless, not even such a hideous name diminishes the awe with which scientists look upon the Socotra Desert Rose. Today, Socotra is classified as a treasure chest of the world's natural heritage particularly due to its prehistoric fauna and flora. The vast majority of the island's fauna and flora is endemic, which means that it does not exist anywhere else in the world. Among the best known is the dragon blood tree, Dracaena cinnabari, which resembles a giant mushroom. Its treetop is made of long, thick, green needles. The tree survives from dew that falls onto these needles at night. Each of the dragon blood trees is hundreds of years old and they rarely reproduce. And now, off to the Far East we go. We are about to embark on a journey through China's Yellow Mountains. The local pine trees grow as if in rebellion against their destiny atop the bare rocks. Their roots adapted and grew deep into the stone, embedding themselves securely. Fantastically shaped granite peaks reach to the heavens. These peaks enjoy poetic names the lion's summit, or the monkey looking out to the sea. 
they evoke the world of ancient legends. One such legend is about the unfortunate lovers, Tai Ching and Mao Chen, who decided to end their suffering by jumping into the ocean of clouds. The old Zen masters perceived the age-long game of the clouds and the mountain peaks as a battle, and at the same time as the harmony of the opposites, the principles of yin and yang. We leave China in search of the next fascinating natural phenomenon, this one found in Russia's Siberia. Baikal, the world's deepest and oldest lake. Its water is so pristine that it could be bottled as is. 336 rivers flow into the lake and only a single one, Ankara, flows out. The immense blue surface is lined by gentle hills and dramatic rock faces. Siberia is really cold, but let's move further north still. Norway's Vesterolen are way past the polar circle and the coast of this archipelago is made up of typical Norwegian fjords. Many experts will confirm that the Norwegian fjords are one of nature's loveliest features on Earth and were created by receding glaciers. Come summertime, the sea swarms with fish and Vesterolen thus becomes a bird's paradise. Tens of different kinds of birds nest on the low green hills rising from the shore. It's mesmerizing just how many birds manage to circle in one place in the air in such a well-coordinated fashion. There's no need for air traffic control in nature. What we see here in the frozen ocean aren't parrots, although you might think so because of their large, powerful beaks. Puffins are among the most competent fishermen in the avian kingdom. They can dive to 70 meters. We wrap up today's journey in search of miracles of nature on the African River Zambezi. On November 16, 1855, during his voyage on the river, David Livingstone heard a faraway rumble and saw a high wall of water spray. The deafening noise made him dock at one of the small islands. He was speechless and stunned as he saw the river disappear below a nearby edge. The water churns in this white stone crevice. As the water falls 120 meters, it first breaks on the stone walls and then hits the bottom so the water is forced back up again. Water sprays in all directions. Fume that thunders. This is one of the local names for the world's highest waterfall. Other local natives use a more poetic name for the waterfall, Rainbow. The vicinity of the falls is saturated with minuscule droplets of water, which often disperse the rays of sunlight into multicolored rainbows. The breathtaking vista of this massive flow of water sweeping everything in its way and free-falling into the abyss could be perceived poetically as the relentless flow of time, mercilessly ticking off human life while nature remains eternal. The aim of this series was to introduce the enchanting and breathtaking nooks of our miraculous planet to you. We didn't just bring you closer to many miracles of nature, but also to the people that live their simple lives in their close proximity. We traversed the planet thoroughly indeed, from north to south and from east to west, and there was something to admire on every step of the way. Such is our planet, beautiful, tender and cruel, colorful and monotonous all in one. We may only pray that it remains so for generations to come. Let's treat it with respect. Respect that is due to all mothers that give life. Farewell, and we hope to see you again.